so today we're going to talk about feline infectious peritonitis, otherwise known as FIP. Um, so first, what is FIP? Um, by definition, feline encompasses cats. Infectious means that it's likely to spread infection. Uh, and peritonitis is the inflammation in the serous membrane lining the abdominal cavity and organs. Um, this disease is caused by the coronavirus. Uh, it affects 90% of cats and catteries and 50% of household cats. Um, and only 5% of these actually develop in, into FIP. Um, so, this virus works by replicating in the intestinal epithelium and macrophages. Um, by replicating in macrophages, it allows it to travel through the bloodstream stream to outside tissues. Um, from there, it can spread into these tissues, recruit more antibodies, and then travel to more macrophages. Um, so it's a pretty efficient virus in that way. So the symptoms of FIP, um, when they are initially exposed to the coronavirus, there are no symptoms, or they could have a mild upper respiratory infection, or um, they could have a mild intestinal disease with diarrhea. So once it actually develops into FIP, uh, there's two types of symptoms that you could see. First is the non-effusive symptoms. Um, these include loss of appetite, weight loss, depression, and fever. Uh, after that, it can develop into the effusive symptoms. These are uh, buildup of fluid in the abdomen and chest. Um, the fluid in the chest and abdomen also results in difficulty breathing uh, because of the pressure there. Um, there can also be neurological symptoms such as nystagmus and seizures. So uh, the case that I saw with this, um, he, when he came for his first kitten visit at the vet clinic, he had the diarrhea from the coronavirus, but we did not recognize it as that. Um, so once it actually developed into FIP, uh, we saw the non-effusive symptoms and treated him for a bacterial infection, which didn't solve the problem. Uh, once it actually developed into the effusive symptoms, we recognized that this was a more serious problem uh, and tested for FIP and found him positive for it. So. Um, Diagnosis-wise, we could send off blood work to look at organ values. Um, this will tell us if there's any organ damage from the virus. Um, effusion fluid testing is what we did for our patient. This sent off the abdominal fluid. Um, it came back with elevated white blood cells and elevated proteins. Um, this told us that he had FIP. Um, this can also be done with the Revoltis test. A polymerase chain reaction can be done. Um, this looks at any viral components that could be in the cells. And ELISA tests can also, also be performed, but these aren't as effective because they could come back positive for a coronavirus um, that isn't necessarily causing the problem. So treatment-wise, there is no cure for FIP. You just have to manage the symptoms and provide supportive care for your cat. This can be done with corticosteroids, fluid therapy, um, draining the effusive fluid, so uh, like this picture here. Um, you can also do blood transfusions and cytotoxic drugs like you would use for cancer. Um, with our patient, we did supportive care by draining his fluids that had built up in his abdomen routinely. Um, we were also going to start cytotoxic drugs, but um, before they arrived at our vet clinic, he was too far gone and we had to euthanize. So, go back to that syringe. Is it a white milk colored yes. fluid? Yes. Yeah, it's, um, yes, white, white pus colored. But that's not normal to have a white colored fluid in your abdominal cavity. No. Usually if you do a tap and it's a normal animal, it's basically kind of clear. Yes. So, um, who is at risk for FIP? These are cats with already weakened immune systems, such as those that are FELD positive or kittens. Uh, cats in shelters or catteries are also at risk for this because they are in such high density populations that this virus can spread pretty, pretty rapidly through them. Um, the most common way that this is spread is through infected females passing it to their kittens. And it's also a polygenic inherited trait in some breeds like Bengals, uh, ragdolls, um, breeds like that. So the best way to go about this is prevention. 
Um, in cateries and shelters, it's recommended to maintain clean environments. So um, since this virus is shed in feces and saliva, it's necessary to keep clean litter boxes, clean food bowls, um, and when you're introducing new cats to your cattery, it's best to isolate them and monitor them for any symptoms of FIP. There is one vaccine available. Uh, this is through the Pfizer Animal Health Company. And this vaccine isn't as effective because if the cats have already been exposed to the coronavirus, um, this vaccine won't do anything. So, uh, there's that. Do you guys have any questions? I'll let you point. What is a cattery? A cattery, uh, that's like Now a repeat the question because some people don't hear. Oh, uh, he asked what a cattery was. That's like a cat breeder. So um, mm -hmm. that's why it's so high density is because they're just producing kittens all the time. Good definition, yeah. Cattery. Not a, not a term you hear all the time. Other questions? Uh, how about people that have had cats with FIP? Um, now, how does that genetics thing work? Does that mean, I know the virus is all around, so are they more I think susceptible or what? I read somewhere that um, they're not sure if it's polygenic now or if it's just because these purebred cats are bred in catteries that they're exposed to already from birth. Um, so they're not quite sure anymore on that one. Okay. Because, yeah. you know, there's a whole area of genetics that we never really get into. And, you know, you can breed animals that are resistant to diseases. You know, you can take animals and if some survive, then take them and breed those to other survivors and you can end up with, even in the same species, a group of animals that are more resistant to a disease than their counterparts. It's a whole area that we should do more with. Breeding, you know, genetically getting disease resistance. Okay. Oh, Caroline has a question. Oh, so go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna comment on what you said. Did you see the article about the resistant pigs they bred at Missouri State University, Missouri, something like that? Okay, what were they breeding for? Virus resistance. Okay, virus resistance. <clears throat> no, I don't, I haven't seen that one, but there was some study in Canada where they were doing some pathogen challenge, I think would be the best way to say it, and then they monitored how the cows responded immunologically, and then they took the best responders and bred those to other best responders, and you can make genetic progress, and that's something we don't do enough of. Uh, breeding in disease resistance, we could do less vaccines, healthier animals, yeah, so it's a big, big area that we should probably, some of us should look into more. I know, I think in Canada, they did some kind of pathogen challenge and then monitored what the immune system did. And what they challenged with was some organism, but it wasn't gonna give the animal a disease. And I can't remember, you know, it just it was kind of monitoring how the immune system reacted to that pathogen. I should look it up because I'm foggy. Other questions? <clears throat> 